I think one of the greatest strengths of the Around the World semester is its um, built-in comparative nature. I loved how connected the academics were with where we were at. Everything was tied together. We learned how to apply our academics to the world. It was probably the hardest semester I think I've ever had so far. I definitely appreciated the stretch that it required of us um, academically. One of the most uh, challenging things to improvise as professors were our classrooms. We never knew when we were going to have a class and we never knew where we would be having a class. We got to have a class at a, a, ru a ruin, a temple in Petra. We taught in the only place that we could find next to the pyramids where there was shade. We even studied on the plane sometimes. We'd come by with stuff for us to read. Um, walk down the aisles and say, okay, you gotta read this, or you're gonna have a quiz on it. We quickly learned that the world itself was our classroom. What we study is not textbooks, but primary sources. Like, we weren't reading a book about the Quran, we were reading the actual text. We could really get into the conversation. While in Ankara, Turkey, we got the opportunity to meet the head imam and we were talking about Christianity, and we were talking about the Muslim faith, and it was one of those moments where the things that I had seen on TV were shattered. We did so much in such a short amount of time. We, the, the way I describe it is I lived four years in four months. So you would say, oh, are you gonna go to sleep? Like, why are you gonna go to sleep? Uh, are you gonna take a nap? You could go somewhere, you could do something that will shape you, that will, um, I don't know, that you'll remember forever. We would just look at each other, like, you know, like, should we do this? And be like, well, like, if we don't do it, we're not going to get to do it again. So it was just like realizing that, like, you know, this was like your opportunity. You had to seize the opportunity sometimes when you weren't even ready. But that's how travel was for me. Real spontaneous. I lost track of all time. I had no idea what day, what day of the week it was. Most of the time, I just didn't even know what was going on. It was just, okay, let's do this, because it's here and it's random. I made a personal goal of mine to run in every single country. We were hiking up Mount Sinai. I remember thinking, this is taking forever. We ran up Sinai. And that night, we worshipped on the top of Mount Sinai. It was one of those moments where you just feel like God was like right there next to you. We were told that we're going to this place called Cappadocia. He would not tell us what it was, and so we just got on a bus and went. You just see all these mounds all over the place, with all these caves inside. I had no idea that existed. The vice principal runs out to his car and says, wait, 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 I want to show you something. And he brings back this small case, and I was like, what the heck is this? And he pulls out this weird looking gourd flute thing, and he was going on and on and on, and people were like, yeah, you're doing great. And it was just really bizarre. Uh, our last guys' night out was in China, and I took them to a typical male bonding activity, giving them a foot massage. Asked me in Chinese uh, if I wanted my legs hot or not hot. So I said, sure, we'd love to have our feet la be la. And as I looked down, my legs <laughs> went up in flames immediately, and I was screaming, ah! And I turned, and one by one down the row of chairs, each of their legs just <laughs> most radical experiences I've had with my leg hair around the world. One of our greatest adventures was probably staying with homestays. They all took care of us and they made sure we had what we needed. In Kenya. In Kenya, music is just everywhere. And the mentors that we worked with that worked in the slums as well, they had formed an acapella singing men's group called the Conquerors. And oh my gosh, did they sing. Awesome songs. They taught the boys a song called Mama Africa. Sing along, sing along, sing along, sing along, sing along for Mama. In Jerusalem, we met a group, another group from California, actually from Murrieta, and they invited us to go to worship night, um, one of the nights, and we're walking through the streets of Jerusalem, and then we just plop down like right in the middle of the street with shops on either sides and different restaurants and cool like walking area between walking street and just sit down and start worshiping 
it was something so unlike anything I've ever done before. Just to be able to like close my eyes and like lift up my hands and sing right there in the middle of like Jerusalem and Israel was just, it was incredible. It was a trip where we learned about how great God was over and over and over and over again. The Word of God pervading through our team, through our own personal devotions, but then as our group rallied around and, and did devotions on a daily basis, I saw the Word of God bringing a peace and a calm to our team that I didn't expect. We discovered in a new and powerful way our dependence on the Holy Spirit, and He came through in, a, in, a, in an amazing way. I really believe the purpose behind the trip, the service missional element of the trip, forced a lot of us to really get on our knees and say, God, we need you. We can't do this on our own. We cannot muster up our own courage. We can't fabricate our own sense of spirituality in the face of this kind of desperation, in the face of this kind of poverty. We've seen like the worst of human depravity. Like we've seen kids like who have gotten kicked out of their houses in Kenya and are on glue. And we've seen people in India who have come from the sex trade, whose like parents have put them in there, like who've been just like horribly abused. But in the midst of all that, like I have seen this undeniable hope and this undeniable beauty. Like and the people in those countries too at the same time. And I was like, that is what overtakes me about God. It's like the midst of all this, that is still evident. When you think about a mission trip, you think about just going and experiencing people and loving on people and like, that's it. But we did so much more than just do that. We had a lot of fun, like, and, and looking at these people now, like thinking about it, I'm thinking about like how much fun we had. We, I think one of the most surprising things about the trip really was the family dynamic. Being with 25 people is better than being by yourself. We weren't able to, I don't know, think about ourselves. It was great. <laughs> There's no community that I've been a part of in my life that's been as tight as the, that we were together in this trip. For four months, you get upset with people, you get happy, uh, you struggle sometimes, and you really get to know them. It was absolutely wonderful. And this trip wouldn't be the same without the group, without the professors, and it's community. And that's what Jesus did with his disciples, so we experienced community for four months. It's a challenge, but it's the best challenge I've ever had. And I know that my entire life is different in the best way possible because of it. You're surrounded by positivity and pushed to, um, to be greater and to constantly have your mind focus on God or the other people around you so you couldn't be selfish. I really grew up, learned how to ask questions about myself, about other people. We are not the only ones in the world. And we are very, very blessed of being where we are. And you can go and share that all around the world. And that's why we are here. It's really amazing to see how God took me from St. Louis to Concordia, Nebraska, to Concordia, Irvine, and then to around the world, and all the things that he's shown me since then. It's not like we're going out into the world and trying to share God and introduce God to these people. No, he's already there, and you know, like he doesn't need us, but he's so gracious and merciful and just all-inclusive that he'll use us and use his children to reach out to others, which is really humbling. Before the trip, I had blinders on, and I was just like focused on my own life, and you know, just really selfish. And then this trip basically like took my blinders off. Here we are. I'm loving God, I'm loving people, serving, and I see how four more years at Concordia. So I'm excited and looking forward for the next around the world trip. I think that each little experience that we had, we're reminded of it and it comes out every single day. <laughs> you realize that the trip was real. And I think that that, like, that's what we can hold on to. Like, that's what God has given us to, <laughs> to pursue and to remind us of him all the time.